Hi, my name's Josh Genie, and I'm here with Drew Henderson from the Cool Kids Club today. And we're going to be talking a little bit about how kids have dealt with anxiety during the COVID period, which has been the last six months. Mm. Um, and yeah, we're just here to talk about, ask Drew some questions about her experiences during that time with the kids from the Cool Kids Club. And what is the age range of like, the, the, the kids so that you work with? The technically, we work with seven to 13 year olds. Uh, so we transition them into high school from primary school. So once they transition into year seven, they actually become switch leaders and can come on program and be an older teenage role model for the kids in the Cool Kids program, pretty yep. much. So yeah, we did a lot of support with the switch leaders as well during coronavirus, um, because I think it affected the older kids a bit more as well, yeah, okay, uh, or noticeably for them, yep. affected them a and bit how more. And how did it affect them? Um, I think just like having no, no sport, no social cohesion. It was a lot of just online, a lot yeah. of TikTok. We, TikTok has been great this year because it kept a lot of people busy. Yeah, okay. But then a lot of other things have come up on TikTok that we yeah. had yep. to deal with. Yep. Yep. Um, so it was interesting, but yep. they miss training. They miss like playing sports. They miss buying new footy shoes. Yep. Like every Zoom session we talked about sports. Mm -hmm. They showed us their medals they're so proud of. Like. It was really great to get to know them more. Yeah. But um, yeah, they missed out on a lot of team sports, yeah. which yeah, is sad for them. Are but, there any strategies that you could um, give of the parents and guardians, you know, parents, carers, or guardians of the, of the young yeah, people? Yeah, to deal with anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, I think that firstly, knowing that kids probably won't identify what they're feeling as anxiety, it's usually comes out as I'm sad, I feel sick or they get angry, really frustrated at really little things. We've had a lot of parents being like, you know, they're really angry all the time. And it's about knowing that anxiety can come up in different ways for yep. different people. Like a lot of, most people have anxiety in their life and maybe how a parent experiences it won't be the same as their child experiences it. But just recognizing that that is probably a factor in their behavior and yep. just offering that, that support of saying, I hear you. And I also feel what you're feeling and I understand that it's really hard in this time and you're doing your best. Having kids, kids having that and knowing that when they're feeling bad, they can say, hey, I'm not feeling good yep. is one of the most important things. Secondary to that, I would say like, just learning really basic ways of getting your kids to breathe through things or de-escalating yep. situations. Because yep. I know it's easy, all of us, it's easy when somebody's going off, when you're sharing a room or whatever, it's easy to be like, oh, okay. Can you just leave me alone? Can you just be yep. quiet? Which in coronavirus, you know, no shade to anyone. That's, yeah, we all need to be left alone sometimes. But I think when you have the opportunity to um, just calm somebody down and de-escalate a situation, it really creates a strong, a strong response from them to yep. know that they're supported and that they're cared for and know what they're feeling. Yep. Like identifying that as, are you, are you worried about this? Are you anxious about this? So that they understand different words for different feelings, feelings and maybe yeah. they can learn to articulate it a bit more yep. and therefore we can help a bit more. Yep. Or as parents or carers or anyone can, you know, do something a little bit different. But I think the first thing is just recognizing that as a parent, you're going through so much pressure, yep. anxiety. Yeah. Kids are probably also feeling that, but they don't have the words to say no, it. They can't. So I think just yeah. recognizing that in the first place and when you have the energy yeah. to just take that time and sit through it and, you know, talk to them there and then. And sometimes, sometimes they're not easy to talk to when yeah. they're crying and blowing up and just screaming and that's okay. And I suppose well. that like, you know, pressure and, or, you know, the pressure that kind of came up during this time when people were homeschooling as well. And it's just like the advice that I was given, it's just like, you just do your job. Literally. Yeah, you just do your job and yeah. they'll they'll learn. Yeah. But you you know, and but that was an important yeah. part for me. As they well. I think that's as well, it's like yeah. to recognise we're in a global pandemic. Yes. You nobody has been in this situation for since the Spanish flu. Yep. Things have changed a lot and I think it's like if you're getting through the date, you're doing your best. Yep. If you're fed, if you're clean like you're doing your best as a parent and yep. as a family. Yep. And I think that there was real concern about people missing school and stuff, which is important. It's, yeah. It is really important, but at the end of the day, mental health and I think like the safety and security of your family yes. ended up trumping that a lot. And yeah. that's important and that's 
okay. okay. Like that's, yeah, that's really right. normal yeah, yeah. and that's, you're in a global pandemic. This is not normal times. This is not business as usual. Yep. And you just need to do your best. And we were just trying to support the parents in doing their best. And they did. Yep. They did amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, they cool. did great.